on the knocking out Jake Paul will have to wait a little longer. It's okay. I'm energized for it. Do all of it's this. This is all too soon for like golf. This, everything's there. That's how you get the power? Yeah. What is it, what is it that you're doing there? You're really shifting your weight, yeah, right? Yeah, it's balance. Yeah. Mike Tyson is back in the ring, training with Terrence Crawford to face YouTube sensation turned boxer, Jake Paul. This unexpected pairing has the boxing world buzzing. Tyson, known for his raw power and legendary career, is teaming up with the technically brilliant and undefeated Crawford. Together, they aim to combine old school ferocity with modern precision. Ahead of their November bout, Jake Paul got a stark warning from Mike Tyson after knocking out Mike Perry in the sixth round. Originally set for this week, the fight was postponed due to Tyson's medical concerns in May. However, the 57-year-old is ready and fired up, warning Paul in a chilling post on X about their upcoming clash. Mike Tyson said, 118 days. 16 weeks and 6 days, 17 weekends, 2,832 hours, 169,920 minutes, 10,195,200 seconds. The clock starts now. In the ring, Perry, the 32-year-old bare-knuckle fighting champion, tested Paul's chin in a tough match. Despite the challenge, Paul stunned Perry with a devastating combination in the sixth round. Post-fight, Paul quickly honored his brave opponent, setting the stage for his showdown with Tyson. Jake Paul said about Perry, he's tough as nails. I'm sorry it took so long. I just hit too hard, but he took a lot of damage. That's a W, baby. I'm so excited. Before their anticipated showdown in November, Paul also urged Tyson to sign the contract. After beating Perry, Paul sent his own message to his next opponent. He said, Mike Tyson, your next big boy. Sign the contract, November 15th on Netflix. I'm excited for that one. I'm going to go home and prepare for that one. It's happening, November 15th. Mike Tyson is training. He's back, looking crazier than ever. I'm going to get another KO and prove everyone wrong once again. Every Everyone said I was an idiot for taking this fight, that I was risking it, but this is why I'm here. I take big risks. Tyson's most recent professional bout, nearly two decades ago, ended with him retiring on his stool after five rounds against Kevin McBride. Despite the setback, Tyson remains resolute about his return to the ring. Jake further added, Mike, I love you, but this is my sport. You're a legend. You're one of the two most famous boxers ever to live, you and Muhammad Ali. It's an honor to get in the ring with you. I'm so, so honored. You're a legend, but I'm going to take your throne, brother. Despite acknowledging the risk, Paul emphasized his willingness to take big challenges. He expressed his admiration for Tyson, calling him a legend and one of the most famous boxers alongside Muhammad Ali, but asserted his intention to take Tyson's throne. With the fight set for November, the boxing world is abuzz with excitement. Fans are eager to see if Paul can back up his bold claims and dethrone the legendary Mike Tyson. Will Paul's audacious risks pay off, or will Tyson's legendary status prove too formidable? All eyes are on November 15th for answers. After postponing his comeback, Mike Tyson expressed his gratitude to his global fan base, saying, I want to thank my fans around the world for their support and understanding during this time. Unfortunately, due to my ulcer flare-up, my doctor has advised me to reduce my training intensity for a few weeks to rest and recover. Mike Tyson's message reassured fans of his commitment and readiness, despite the temporary setback. As he focuses on recovery, Tyson remains confident in his physical condition. Tyson further added, My body is in better overall shape than it has been since the 1990s, and I will be back to my full training schedule soon. Jake Paul, this may have bought you some time, but in the end, you will still be knocked out and out of boxing for good. I appreciate everyone's patience and can't wait to deliver an unforgettable performance later this year. He issued a stern warning to Jake Paul, promising a knockout and an end to Paul's boxing journey. Once Jake Paul stopped Mike Perry in the sixth round. He made a pledge to stop Mike Tyson. After his 10th professional victory against Mike Perry, Jake Paul commented on Perry's toughness and resilience by calling him the king of violence and BKFC champion. Paul remarked that Tyson was training and looking more formidable than ever. He aimed to secure another knockout and prove his critics wrong once again. Paul also revealed he had been feeling sick in the buildup to the fight and that he suspected he had suffered a broken knuckle. He added, I put it on the line. I didn't feel good leading up to this. I was sick and my knuckle was badly swollen up like a big ball. My knuckle was basically broken before the fight. Asked if his injury might delay his fight with Tyson, Paul said, It didn't delay this fight. I'm a warrior. I'll fight through anything. Jake Paul just knocked out Mike Perry in the sixth round, dominating the BKFC star throughout. UFC fighter Derek Brunson thinks this win might mean the Paul Tyson fight won't happen. Yet, the problem child's performance has fans questioning if he will indeed face 58-year-old Mike Tyson on the rescheduled date. Brunson wrote, There's no way they still do Tyson v. Paul. Along with congratulations, 
congratulating Paul on his win, the UFC community also noted the good finish from Jake, as former champion Kamaru Usman put it. While pointing out the disparity in size between Paul's matches, Aljamain Sterling also gave the former Disney star credit for constantly improving in every fight. Josh Thompson, on the other hand, said Paul's victories were called into question because he faced opponents who were smaller than him. But Nate Diaz supposedly made fun of Mike Perry on X, saying, LOL, he was sh**ing himself. Interest in a Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight has waned, with many doubting its competitiveness. Tyson, almost 30 years older than Paul, has health issues and mobility problems. Critics argue that if Paul handled the durable Mike Perry, a 58-year-old Tyson, who hasn't fought seriously in over 20 years, would struggle even more. Despite this, Tyson is back in training after recovering from an ulcer flare-up. His agent, Andrew Ruff, stated that Tyson has been doing resistance and cardio exercises and will return to the boxing gym by month's end. Tyson is under the care of Dr. Danny Issa at UCLA for his health concerns. Ruff said, Everything is on track. His doctor over at UCLA, they've been monitoring him really closely. They're super happy with the progress. Everything is kind of full track to get back in there end of July and get working. I've been told that everything is completely on track and he is on pace to have no limitations at all. His physicians, Dr. Issa in particular, don't believe there'll be any limitations at all. It was unclear how Paul fight against Perry would impact his matchup with Tyson. However, Roof stated that Tyson is in favor of Paul and his manager Nikisa Badarian's decision to fight Perry. Ruff said, Look, everyone is very interested, and certainly there were a lot of conversations and this was Jake's and Nikisa's decision, and Mike supports it 100%, and we'll see how it plays out. We'll be watching very intently. According to Ruff, Tyson has been training in France, where his daughter Milan has been playing tennis, and Las Vegas, where he owns a property. Nice. Come on, punch him. Yeah, yeah. Being well enough to return to full strength training after more than a month off was the aim. Ruff said, so really right now it's been a focus on getting him back in shape to go do that, which he is. Health comes first, and that's something that his physicians were very focused on, and making sure that he's in the best position to come back completely 100% ready to go. And so that first moment that was the focus was on our camp, to make sure that he would be healthy and ready to go for Jake Paul. Moreover, in response to criticism of Deontay Wilder's impending rematch with YouTube sensation, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson has responded responded back. Tyson questioned, referring to the Wilder, then let Mike get hurt. You don't have to worry about paying my bills. Reflecting further, Tyson became more animated, challenging Wilder's perspective. Everyone says this makes no sense, but he's how old? He's not who I am. He can't go to Mongolia and have somebody know who the f he is. Wilder had voiced his worries about Tyson's health. In a statement, Wilder expressed his best wishes to Tyson while criticizing the decision to approve the fight. I think it's bad the commission has licensed Mike Tyson because he hasn't been active in 20 years. People can get hit in the wrong place place and at the wrong time. He's too old for this. Despite the criticism, Tyson is undeterred and remains optimistic about the rescheduled fight on November 15th. He has been releasing training videos that highlight his enduring punching strength. The veteran boxer's return, delayed by a medical issue, has generated considerable excitement, and Tyson is resolute in demonstrating his fitness and skill. Wilder's concerns highlight the potential dangers. Wilder said, God forbid he gets hurt. No one gives a f about Mike. If they did, they wouldn't sanction the fight. He pointed out that, despite Despite Tyson's retained power, his stamina and fight setup are crucial, warning that without them, the fight could turn into a clown show. Mike Tyson's last bout was a 2020 exhibition against Roy Jones Jr., showcasing his enduring athleticism. Now, at 57, he's set to face 27-year-old Jake Paul, a YouTuber-turned-boxer with a 9-1 record. Despite the age difference, Paul is ready for the challenge, and Tyson remains confident. In an Esquire interview, Tyson addressed concerns from friends and family about fighting Paul, emphasizing his positive outlook. Initially as one of the year's biggest combat sports events, the rescheduled fight promises to be an epic showdown this autumn. Tyson told the outlet, I'm a glory junkie. I love people thinking about me all day. I'd rather live a short life of glory than a long life of obscurity. It's just who I am. This is all I started fighting for, to get all this status. I'm going to be chasing it for the rest of my life. I know that. I'm never going to get what I want, because I'm one of those gluttons for pain. I can never get enough. Tyson, who turned 58 at the end of June, was on a flight from Miami to Los Angeles in May when he was reported to have suffered nausea and dizziness. His reps said in a statement at the time that the incident had been due to an ulcer flare-up 30 minutes before landing. Tyson's medical incident sparked fears of a fight cancellation, but most valuable promotions confirmed it was only postponed after consulting healthcare experts. Meanwhile, Connor McGregor slammed Jake Paul for targeting Tyson again after his victory over Mike Perry. In Tampa, Paul stopped Perry in the sixth round, delaying his clash with Tyson until November. Despite Paul's win, McGregor unleashed a scathing social media rant, unimpressed by the YouTuber-turned-boxer's performance. The former two-division champion wrote on X, Jake Paul is the biggest 
bag I have ever seen in my life. 40 pound weight difference and still shitting himself in there. Nikisa, you should take him to Vegas. Oh, that's right. You could never. The athletic commission testing, real testing, real fighting. He further added, you could never. And then calling out 60 year old Mike Tyson fresh off an in-flight medical emergency. I swear to God, a fat can of most valuable bag. After that, McGregor focused on Perry's performance, the BKFC star who entered his fight against Paul, having won six straight. Platinum is no longer on the roster, according to the Irishman, who also shares ownership of the promotion. He wrote, Hey Mike, you're released, and you can go and compete in your smelly, dirty boxing championship thing. The smell of it. Good luck. You're fired. Paul quickly learned about McGregor's most recent accusations and his purported dismissal of Perry. The problem child wrote, Connor's on Twitter all the time. He's on his yacht all the time. But guess where he's not, the ring fighting me, so he can talk all the f**k he wants, but the notorious MMA Jake Joseph Paul from Disney Channel. In his brief stint as a professional boxer, Paul has been accused of using performance-enhancing substances on multiple occasions. The former Disney star, however, has always denied ever using PEDs and has cleared every drug test he's taken. In January 2022 message to UFC boss Dana White, he said, steroid test me whenever the f**k you want. It is two weeks after my fight and I'm a fat bit." and I take it as a compliment because there's no other excuse to me knocking out all your champions then. This kid does steroids. Look at me. Look at that. A fat bitch. Meanwhile, Jake Paul also slammed Connor in his recent podcast appearance. Perry apparently got, he got fired from the BKFC by Conor McGregor. It's actually kind of sad. I, I, I don't, I don't it's, like it. It is sad. No, it's sad. It's horrible. Yeah. Bro. Because, especially because he's like, bro, we, when you're promoting a fight, you can't be friendly with people, but I think he's awesome. Yeah. I mean, he's I, funny. He's Oh, he's hilarious. great at promoting. Mike's fantastic. He's magnetic. He, it was hard to talk to him the whole entire week because I thought he was hilarious. On the other hand, Mike Tyson has said that his wife frequently tells him he doesn't have to finish his battle with Jake Paul. He said, my wife keeps saying, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. And I'm like, no, I do have to do this. Meanwhile, the YouTuber is determined to stay sharp, knowing that this bout could be the most significant of his brief career. Jake said, Mike is the baddest man on the planet. One of the greatest heavyweights, if not the greatest heavyweight of all time. He has so much experience. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. So focused, so one-track minded, then it just got pulled form underneath me. It was a lot to handle, and it transitioned into something else. Jake Paul faced scrutiny for choosing Mike Perry, over focusing on his massive payday with Mike Tyson. Despite the risks, Paul acknowledged Perry's fearsome reputation as a powerful, fast, and resilient bare-knuckle brawler. Paul knows he can't underestimate this fight, and believes that staying sharp and focused is key to his success. Jake added, I need the experience. I need to stay active. I fear no man. I'm ready anytime, any place, any one, and I truly back that up with my action. It's not just something I say. I'm here to become world champion. I've done everything else I wanted to do in boxing. I've exceeded my expectations, so that's my last goal. I will be the cruiserweight world champion. Roy Jones Jr., the last fighter to face Mike Tyson, is weighing in on Tyson's upcoming bout with Jake Paul. Unlike their previous draw in an exhibition match, this clash will be a professional fight with larger gloves and eight two-minute rounds. According to Jones, who spoke with All the Smoke Bout, the outcome of the bout will be decided in the first few rounds. He said, It all depends on what Mike does. They've got 14 ounce and two minute rounds because of his age. So if Mike gets in shape to compete those two minute rounds for eight rounds, they are going to be hard for anybody. Roy further added that Jake had gained weight, reaching 230 or 240 pounds, which could work to his advantage. He noted that with this added weight, Jake might be a different animal, having as much weight as Mike Tyson to be able to push him around. He then said, So they are kind of balancing the playing fields by allowing Jake to gain that much weight, because if he can sustain three or four rounds, Rounds, he can win the fight, but they will be very difficult for him to sustain because Mike still punches like an animal, and if you can't push him around, he's going to beat you. The former world champion at four weights expressed his expectation that Tyson's strength will put Paul in his place. He said, when you're a warrior, it doesn't really matter about age. We're warriors. We don't care about getting punched, no matter what age we are. That's what we do. If he can get in shape like he did with me to go eight rounds, he's trouble. He's a problem for anybody because he's Iron Mike. Simple. Roy compared Mike Tyson to a pit bull that never knows when to stop. Predicting their match will inevitably become a fierce battle. Fun for the fans. The fans love to see fun. Uh, it's so much better than Mike Tyson fighting another active heavyweight that's truly active right now because he could get hurt. Find a YouTuber, he's making up the same, making he probably even more money, but less risk because Jake Paul can't hurt Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson can hurt Jake Paul, but Jake can't really hurt Mike. And you obviously fought Mike Tyson a few years ago. How how surprised were you with you know how well Mike performed after that long out of the ring? Very surprised, which is why I'm telling you that I don't think Jake Paul can hurt him because it was hard for me to hit him. And I'm way faster at hitting somebody than Jake Paul.
While Tyson isn't out to harm Jake Paul seriously, he will assert his dominance and showcase his capacity for damage if needed. Respect is crucial for Jake. Otherwise, Tyson will show no mercy. Meanwhile, Tyson is training with Terence Crawford in a grueling and innovative regimen. Their intense program includes strength training, resistance exercises, and high-intensity intervals to peak Tyson's power and endurance. Crawford is sharpening Tyson's technical skills, footwork, defense, and combination punches through challenging sparring and drills. Tyson's speed and agility are also getting a major boost with agility ladders, speed bags, and reflex training. Be careful on that uppercut. Huh? Be careful on that. Crawford and Tyson are diving into strategy sessions to prepare for Jake Paul. They're analyzing Paul's fights to pinpoint weaknesses and craft counter strategies. Crawford's influence is significant, modernizing Tyson's style with advanced tactics and a sharper, more adaptable approach. He's also emphasizing mental toughness to keep Tyson composed and strategic under pressure. This partnership is set to blend Tyson's raw power with sophisticated strategy for a thrilling showdown. As Tyson gears up for his epic showdown, his preparation goes beyond physical readiness. It's also about mental rejuvenation. The former champion has praised Crawford for boosting his confidence and mindset, making their partnership a game changer. Tyson is embracing cutting edge recovery techniques like cryotherapy, massage therapy, and nutritional optimization to keep his body in peak condition. Here's how to get the Mike Tyson physique. In his prime, he was five foot 11 and weighed 220 pounds, making his maintenance approximately 4,000 calories a day. Mike Tyson has one of the most intimidating physiques of all time, defined by his strong, thick neck. Acquiring his build from a bodybuilding perspective is one thing, but actually training to get the strength and conditioning of him is another beast entirely. His training regimen is insane. Tyson first warms up with a 45 minute run. For his actual workout, he does 2,000 squats, 250 sit-ups, 500 tricep extensions, 500 push-ups, 500 shrugs with weight, and 500 neck crunches. He then immediately jumps in the ring for 20 full rounds, supplemented with other aerobic exercises and technical training. The session ends with an hour and a half of cycling on a stationary bike. His training totals to over 60 hours each week, only resting on Sundays. Not only is he one of the hardest workers in the world, but he also has world-class genetics. What do you think will be the biggest factor in Tyson's comeback, his mental edge, or his modern recovery methods? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to check out our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.